going on everyone michael back with another video so today we're going to be showing a quick navigation around sharepoint for new users i find this is pretty helpful for people that haven't used sharepoint before because it can get a little confusing for if someone hasn't used sharepoint and i'm just going to do a quick little guide about navigating around the website so i have a brand new sharepoint here i made a, a sharepoint for marketing so on the home page we got a few different um things going on on the screen we got the news activity documents and quick links so this is the home page for the sharepoint um you can edit it how you want to so on the right hand side you have an edit button and you have a few options here you can add sections add new content with the uh the plus icon there's a few different options you can choose from um but yeah if you want to remove content it's pretty simple UI, delete web parts, edit web parts. Usually I remove the, the news because that's not really too helpful for some teams. And then once you're all done with the saving and uh, editing, you can go ahead and press republish and that will save the changes for your team. Also on the homepage, we have this option for new. So if you want to add a new list uh, to store data, a document library to store files, a page so you can have a um, communicate with your team, spaces, news, apps, they're all right here. And the left hand side, this is actually called the navigation bar and it allows you to have hyperlinks to different um, websites. So if you wanted to add a website, you would go ahead and click on edits. Say I want to add a website to Google. I'm able to easily do that. And if I clicked on this, actually take you to Google. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Adding it is as simple as, me removing it is as simple as adding. So we'll go ahead and click on remove. Go ahead and press save. Conversations, this will take you to the Outlook. I usually don't use it, I usually remove this because I don't, I use Outlook, the application on the computer instead of the web browser. So we got documents. So this is the document library. It is created by default because if you have a team, uh, it needs to store the file somewhere. So it's usually stored in this folder. You can make your own document libraries for different use cases. It pretty much all depends on you. A notebook, this will take you to a OneDrive, a OneNote where you can store information on if you like taking notes on OneNote. Uh, pages, this will bring you to the document library containing all the pages on the website. If you want to add new pages, you're able to do it within here. So site contents, everything you create on the website will be in the site content. So if I create a new document library, it will show in here. I actually did create a PTO calendar in my other video, so it is showing here. Any list you would make will be shown here as well. Also, we have subsites that's a little more advanced, so I won't get into it too much, but if you want to create a new subsite, you can do it here. And then we have the recyclement. So anything you remove from the, anything that gets deleted from the SharePoint will be in the recyclement. So that's a quick overview of the navigation bar and the home page. But there's still one more critical thing, which is the cogwheel in the top right corner. So we have a few more options. We have add a page, add an app, site contents, which will contain everything on the SharePoint. If you ever lose a hyperlink or anything, uh, site contents will be there. Site information, so some basic information that uh, depending on your permission level, usually owners have access to this. You could change the site name, the description, uh, change it from private to public, uh, delete the website, and you can actually get into the site settings from here as well. So we're just going to go ahead and save this. And wait for it to load. Sometimes it will take a second to load the, uh, the top right. It's got to check your permissions. All right. So we got site permissions as well. So this will pretty much be uh, managed by the owners of the site, but I like to go into the advanced permission settings because I find it's a lot easier to use when managing permissions. So if you want to add people to the website, you have three different groups on default. You have members, owners, and visitors, and you have three different permission levels, which is edit, full control, and read. 
So if you wanted to grant um, a new user access to the website and you want them in the marketing members, you would go ahead and uh, go into here. Oh, you're probably your best bets to go around and play around with permissions. And then once you get a little used to it, it's a lot easier and it's a lot simple to figure it out. So we'll go ahead and wait again. So apply a site template. If, you're, if your organization has a site template, that's usually handled by the SharePoint admins. But um, you, you most likely not use that. Site usage, site performance. Um, you're most likely not going to use those as well. That's pretty much just data for the admins. I mean, if you're an owner and you want to check out the data and the performance, you can go ahead and go in there. And you have changed the look. So you can change the colors around if you wanted to. But I will leave it as default. Actually, I think I changed it. But, but you can go ahead and go in here if you want to change a few things. So we'll go back into the site settings. So under site information, you can actually access the site settings and there's a ton of useful things in here. So this is pretty much like the bread and butter of like control. So the look and feel, site actions, site collection, administration, Microsoft search, web design gallery, site administration and search. So most of the time you really don't have to do a lot within this. This is pretty much like the advanced things. If you just have a communication site where you just want to post about what's going on with the teams, upload files, store files, you pretty much all do that without going into the site settings. Within here, honestly, if you want to add site features and go ahead and go through here and see if you want to add any of these, on default, you pretty much have everything that you need active. But if you wanted to add a few more things, you can go ahead and look through these and see if you want to add them. And honestly, you probably won't go into here unless you get into some more advanced things, but you can go ahead and feel around. That's how you access the site settings. But that's a super quick and fast overview for any users that are new to SharePoint. It could be intimidating for some users if they don't, you know, what don't know what's going on with SharePoint. And um, honestly, most of the time in the navigation bar, you'll be able to get where you need to go. If I need to access the documents right here, if I make a new document library, you actually, let me, uh, so we'll say financial files, storage, document library, or financial files. And it'll give you the option to show on the site navigation. So it'll automatically add it. And it's super easy for people to go, oh, financial files. If you want to add folders, documents, Microsoft makes it super easy with this UI to add things. Add new folder, files, bang. And yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want more SharePoint tutorials, or I can even get into some more advanced stuff with Power Automate, but. Right now, we'll keep it simple. So go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and I'll catch you in the next one.